okay so hello friends today our topic is the nasaria meningitis okay so they are gram negative cocci not only gram negative also diplo cocci so here you can see lensepid lensepid diplo cocci present of pairs present in pairs okay now if we do uh, the negative staining then you can see this uh, picture so this is the india ink or uh, black color and this white portion is the capsule so they are capsulated so now learn the viewless factors so here you can see the cell wall of gram negative nasaria so first is plasma membrane this layer is plasma membrane next this layer is thin peptidoglycan in gram positive bacteria they are thick next is lipoprotein layer this is lipoprotein next is outer membrane this is absent in gram positive bacteria outer membrane now to the outer membrane lipopolysaccharide is attached surface protein or proteins is attached and these are the pili and these are the opacity proteins okay so now learn the one by one so first one is the outer membrane protein so here you can see the surface proteins so protein protein present beneath the capsule okay two types pore a and pore b both show antigenic variability so different types of strains are produced so responsible for serotyping now lps and endotoxin lps provide structural integrity protecting the membrane from certain kind of chemical attack now endotoxin learn in details so what happened endotoxin binds with with cd14 molecules okay this is very important so you have to learn in details binds with cd14 molecule so let's take this is a cd14 molecule and it has a toll like receptor 4 okay tlr4 so the toxin will come toxin will come and the bind these are the endotoxin binding with the toll like receptor now this composition will activate the endothelial cell of the blood vessels okay so endothelial of cells of the blood vessels activates by inducing inflammatory mediators like interleukin 1 interleukin 6 interleukin 8 interleukin 10 and tnf okay now there are two types of result can be happen first one is the here it is the endothelial cell so we, if any injury occurs to the this cell suppose let's take here the injury is produced okay here the injury is produced so there will be a gap from which the fluid okay the loss of fluid will occur loss of fluid will occur and which will lead to shock because body fluid will decrease cellular fluid will decrease and leads to shock and another one can be number two can be this is the endothelial endothelial cell and here intravascular thrombosis can occur intravascular thrombosis can occur okay due to to activation of activation of procoagulants coagulants which leads to DIC that is a disseminated intravascular coagulation so this is the endotoxin now come to the IgA protease so proteases so it will cause lysis of the IgA so they will act protease will act on this side and will break down into two fragments FAB, FAB and FC now now come to transferring binding protein okay so normally what happens Fe2 plus Fe2 plus binds with the transferrin and form Fe transferrin but transferrin binding protein helps the bacteria to separate the Fe from transferrin okay so Fe transferrin only Fe is now separated so this is the mechanism of transferrin now adhesins 
so they will adhere to a tissue surface opacity proteins and pili as i told you in the diagram here you can see the opacity proteins and these are the pili okay now come to the clinical manifestation that what they do now they can hypersensitivity reaction so rashes septicemia waterhouse fedric fedrickson syndrome this is very important and pyogenic meningitis chronic meningococcemia post meningococcal reactive disease mortality that leads to death lab diagnosis we can collect the specimen csa blood nasopharyngeal swab and nasopharyngeal swab so csa suppose we taking 6 ml of csa okay so this is 6 ml now first portion that is 2 ml 2 ml now 2 ml we will take for the centrifuge and used for capsular antigen detection by and biochemical analysis as increase the csa pressure increase protein glucose in the csa next 2, two ml next 2 ml 2 ml and next 2 ml okay next 2 ml will for use for uh, culture on blood agar and chocolate agar and next 2 ml will use for enriching brain heart infusion or the bhi broth Next is nasopharyngeal swab culture on thyromatin medium. Okay, now biochemical test. Biochemical test oxidase positive, catalase also positive, ferments, glucose, and mannitol, but not sucrose. Remember, serological test we do ELISA. Now, see, this is a capsule. So, capsule has different antigens. Okay, so the different antigens will from capsule and antibodies against antibodies against capsular antigen are made so they will react in the ELISA method now molecular diagnosis by PCR so that's it for the meningococci so guys if you like this video then please do not forget to hit the like button and please do subscribe my channel